O oh Lord, we hear of being born by the Spirit and being born again. We ask that you will give us this new chance and new beginning. Help us to reflect on the message of the whole gospel, that you came to save us, not to condemn us, because you love us. Amen. Well, we have a wonderful interlude here in Jesus' ministry. We find him on rooftop by night having a visitor. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, comes to Jesus at night. Now, many have wondered about this and thought perhaps it is because he wanted to be stealthy. He wanted to come and have this conversation in a way that he might ascertain for himself who Jesus truly was so that the other Pharisees who were talking about him might not know that Nicodemus had visited. But I have another theory, and I like this other theory, that it's also because Nicodemus wanted a deep and meaningful, and that just was not possible while Jesus was surrounded by crowds during the day. So it could be a mixture of both that brought Nicodemus in the night, in the dark of night, to a rooftop to have a real talk. So we're going to be fairly reflective with this today. It's important to reflect deeply in Lent on our own spiritual journey and to take inspiration from scripture and this journey that we go on through the lectionary week by week towards Easter. Before we delve into the conversation that Jesus and Nicodemus have and has been recorded in the Gospel of John, first I'd like to pose a question for each of us. If we had the opportunity to come perhaps by night, in secret, and in a not-so-time-sensitive space where there was a lot of time to sit down and chat with Jesus, what might we ask? What would you like to bring to your deep and meaningful with Christ? Is there a big question or questions? that you would like answered? Is there anything in particular that you would say to Jesus if you knew that no one else was listening and that you had Jesus' full attention? I certainly hope that that has been a fruitful reflection and some things might have bubbled up for you because one of the things we can be assured of is that that conversation is available to us whenever we turn to God in prayer. Whenever we carve the time out of our schedules, perhaps it's at night if you're a night owl, perhaps it's in the morning if you're a lark, perhaps it's during the day. Maybe it's by accident sometimes when you just get the opportunity to be still. Whatever it is, Nicodemus made the effort to come to Jesus in the night. And what we can see of this is that just as we are assured that God listens when we pray, Jesus listened intently and was willing to sit with Nicodemus, although I'm sure that he'd had a very busy day and he probably had a lot on the next day too in his ministry of going about sharing the good news, but also in healing people and talking with them and being constantly surrounded and yet he didn't say, I'm sorry, I'm clocked off. I'm sorry, it's time for me to sleep. No, Jesus sat with Nicodemus and Jesus sits with us. This is something which is also celebrated in our psalm today. I don't know if you noticed it, but I certainly did. There's this wonderful part which talks about how the one who has charge of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself is your keeper. The Lord is your defense upon your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will defend you from all evil. It is he who will guard your life. The Lord will defend your going out and your coming in from this time forevermore. What a beautiful psalm to have in the midst of Lent. While many of us perhaps are wrestling with ourselves, or with the temptations that we face, or maybe just with life in general, which can be quite a challenge. So we are assured that 
God needs no rest and is available to us 24 7. So that's the first part of this gospel that I thought was important for us to really celebrate was the fact that if we make the time, God's ready to have deep and meaningfuls with us. Now, the content of this deep and meaningful that Nicodemus had with Jesus on the rooftop, well, it's certainly one which can unravel a little bit, but also there is a lot of mystery when it comes to what Jesus shares. The first thing that he says in response to Nicodemus inquiring as to who Jesus is and if he is legit, is he really the Messiah? You know, all the Pharisees have been talking about him, wondering if this is the case, but mostly in a way that they weren't ready to receive him. Nicodemus is open. He wants to know. And he says, surely no one could do these signs, these healings that you do if you weren't from God. Jesus responds. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Okay, Lord, what does that mean? And Nicodemus inquires further, only to be reassured that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Now, this alludes a little bit to, of course, the baptism of John, which had been being offered prior to Jesus' ministry beginning and by which Jesus himself was baptized. This was the ritual purification and the call to repentance, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, the kingdom of God is come near. And this baptism is one which we deeply reflect on, but also the baptism that Jesus talks about, the one of water, referencing John, but also of the spirit. And that is the baptism that we share as Christians, the baptism which marks us as Christ's own forever, the one which we are baptised in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit, a triune God. Well, that is a very mystery of faith, a triune God, three persons in one, a holy trinity, but one God. And this baptism is what we are working towards as we go through Lent as well. For those who are going to be baptised, often the journey through Lent is one of preparation. But for each and every one of us as Christians, we have the opportunity to reflect on our baptism. The vows that maybe were made on our behalf or that we made for ourselves to be Christ's own forever. And we at Holy Hermits Online will actually reaffirm our vows on Easter Day in our worship liturgy then and there. So it's important for us to reflect on that. There's more to this conversation with Nicodemus, though, so let's keep in mind our baptism and those vows made for us or by us as we carry on with a little bit of the revelation and mystery unravelling in this conversation. Jesus mentions at one point that the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. This is starting to allude to a shift that Jesus calls all religious in his day, but also us to acknowledge that humans, we really like rules. We love structures and we certainly like to have an understanding of what the right thing is to do in every situation. And if we have a law that we can refer to, to figure that out, then that is exactly what we are likely to do. It's ordered. It's settled. We have a bit of a control or understanding of it. What Jesus presents and presented consistently in his ministry is that, yes, the law is important. It is there for a purpose, and that purpose is about relationship. So if the law is actually becoming a burden or a barrier to relationship with God and with others, then it needs to actually fall back and take second place to the very important practice. And that practice is one of faith. Jesus also presents basically the whole gospel in a nutshell at the end of this passage. If we were to share any part of the gospel with anyone, this might be a good one of those little sound bites. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. It's 
not about those who perform the rituals or those who follow the law to a T. No, it's about those who believe in the love of God, which was manifest in the life and ministry and message of Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. Unraveling that a little further, Jesus had alluded just before to what was to come, saying that the Son of Man must be lifted up like the serpent was lifted up on the stick in the hand of Moses for the people in the wilderness. Now, what he's referencing here is when they had been bitten by snakes and they had all perished, they had been poisoned, and God said to Moses, pop a snake on a stick and show it to them, and they were resurrected. And that is what happens for anyone who sets their sights on Jesus. We are given a resurrection or a new beginning. And this new beginning is what he came to give. But in order to fulfill that, we go through and we will on that journey once again go through the events, Holy Week, Jesus' passion and all that he faced in his crucifixion in order for him to to resurrect, to come back to new life, and in a sense, be born again. So there's a lot in this passage. There's more that we could certainly dig into, but that might be enough for us today to sit with and to reflect on. So we had the opportunity to perhaps reflect on what we might say or ask of Jesus if we had his ear for as long as we needed it in secret and I encourage you to really embrace that if there are any unknowns in this passage that are still sitting there certainly we could delve deeper into the relationship between faith and law and how that sits in our practice and life because they both need to be part of it but how is faith the number one and law the number two and maybe that's something to sit with Maybe you are just ready for that journey through Lent towards the renewal of baptismal vows. You're getting excited about being able to say, yes, I turn to Christ. I set my sights on him, the one who offers new life, new birth and resurrection, new beginning and a chance to try again. Whatever it is, I do value and encourage this wonderful passage that we've had on this second Sunday in Lent to really maybe challenge us, but also give us that extra boost to take this to prayer and to make prayer and faith and belief maybe more of our priority to make time and space for in our lives. I'm going to end with a poem which also turns into a prayer. And this one is one by Steve Garnis Holmes. It is called Beginning a Lenten discipline, and it's to reflect on the call to be born again. So I offer this now for us to finish our reflection and time in this homily. In the season of Lent, Jesus invites us to practice the discipline of beginning. And so we pray, God, give us grace to let go of who we have been, what we have done and not done, all pride of accomplishment and guilt over failure, and start over like a newborn child. Give us such trust in your absolute profound forgiveness that we are free to begin anew. Help us to let go of having it all figured out, to be rookies, beginner's mind, to be learners, attentive to each moment, free of old habits and assumptions, seeing as if for the first time, to ask for help and be willing to be led as utterly reliant on you as a newborn infant. We are invited to take this prayer into breath. We breathe in with the word begin, and breathe out with the word new. Begin new. new. 
Amen.